All right, what's up everybody? This is Rob Shack. So today we're gonna to be going through the, hopefully the last part of my Gran Turismo 3 400 meter dash series. I'm gonna be tuning up, I've already tuned up every car in the game and I'm gonna be showing how fast they are in a straight line, basically 400 meters. I think it's about, it's 400 meters. And for those of you who are new, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share, and enjoy the video. So if you're new to the channel, what I've been doing is about, I think it was two years ago, I did a max speed test with every car where I just drove around this course and did the max speed tests. And then I was just like, oh, you know, I never actually tested these cars straight line speed very much. Like I kind of did it a little bit, but I mean, I was kind of curious what cars are the best in just a short 400 meter dash given, you know, their current tunings and you know, have all their weights load and all that stuff. And I'm using the Panos, by the way, Panos Esperante. And so I just kind of go through and I'm trying on every car. So obviously you're going to have some, lots of Formula Ones. For a while I had rally cars. Right now I don't anymore because we're at that point. But yeah, it's all Formula Ones. It'll probably be Formula Ones for a while. I mean, there's a chance that later cars can beat them, but it's probably going to be mainly <laughs> Formula Ones at this point. But I'm going to see if any of these cars that have over a thousand horsepower can basically catch up. That's basically the goal. That's what we're going for. Have you ever noticed that the Panos Esperante, the interior light is different colors on both sides? On the left, it's white, and on the right, it's red. So I thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, so we've been doing this for a few weeks now. I like to spread them out just to kind of, you know, I don't want to just do every, create every good idea I ever think of at the beginning, because then I would just run out of ideas. So I'm trying to like space out my ideas here. Now we're onto the Arda NSX. Um, we'll be going through a lot of these JGTC cars in the next few minutes, because they're all max tuned at about from 1000 to 1100 horsepower. So we're gonna get them all in here. These cars are all freaking awesome. My dream is one day to go to one of these races and watch like professional races, a race car event. Cause I'm like, these cars look so cool. Like, and they're so menacing in sound. And I'm like, I would just love to hear, just to be at the course and watch it. You know what I'm saying? If y'all have been to any cool racing events, let me know in the comments below. Cause I'm very curious what races people have gone and seen. All right, so that was the Arno. I, I hope somebody places in this video. That's the hope, at least. I'm gonna move on to one of my favorite cars in terms of aesthetic and appeal. It's the Raybrick NSX. Very, very fast. Very uniquely colored, because not a lot of cars are like a bluish purple type look, but apparently like Raybricks are always looking like that, and it's sick. Um, compared to the 99, this one has a gray lower half of the car. The Raybrick NSX JGTC in, in GT2 was all purple, but they updated it with the 2000 model. But I kind of wish, again, I've, I've said this in so many of my videos, I really wish they had brought back the 99 versions of all these awesome cars that are in Gran Turismo 3. I think it would have been kind of cool to just like, basically you just alter the decals and a, a couple color schemes. But then I'm like, that's all you have to do. So that's what I was hoping, but it's okay. Now we're on to the Dodge slash Chrysler GTSR Team Areca. Again, this is another one where I'm like, they had the Team Areca in 90, the 99 version in Gran Turismo 2, and it looked awesome. It was like white, and it had like a swoosh on it type thing. Sick. And this one looks great too. This looks kind of like a GTSR, so I'm not like this and this one, but I'm like, yeah. You could have brought back the 99 with that unique color scheme. That's just all I think about with this game is like, this game is perfect to me in every single way except for that. But it's, that's just my opinion. I mean, obviously they didn't want to just duplicate every single car. That is one thing that's really awesome about Gran Turismo 3 is like, you actually suggest that they do add more duplicates because there just isn't any. It's such a unique thing. Now we're on the Corvette C5R. Because, I mean, I know that y'all know this. In later games, and even in Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2, there's so many, like, almost identical versions of the exact same car. Like, 
every single Miata ever <laughs> is in all these games. Every single Skyline ever is in the games. Every single, you know, Viper, every single, uh, you name it. There's just, they put every single version of every car in there and they they basically just pad their stats and say, oh, look, we have like a 1,200 cars, but it's like, how many of those cars are just unique one make cars or like one version of that car? It's like, nah, it's not really a thing. So the thing that I like about Grand Theft Auto 3, just the way it is right now, the way they've finished it is, there's really not a lot of that. Like, you get a couple, I think there's like, there's like two Miatas and they're different years. There's like an 89 and a 93 and they're like, it's hard to eat. It's like, it's like you can't even tell what the difference is, but there's that. And then there's, there's two, I think there's two Acura NSXs. Other than that, everything in the game is unique. And if there's anything different, let me know. Cause I'm pretty sure that's it. I think the only unique, the only cars that are similar is there's a Skyline GTR V spec and a Skyline GTR V spec two from with the R34 model. I think those are the only two ones. But like, I'm pretty sure every car in the game is just like the version of that car. Like, there's one RX-7 from like the olden days. There's two different RX-7s of the FD type, brought up the Skyline GTR V spec, by the way. There's like the Mazda RX-7 type RZ, and then there's the Mazda RX-7 type RS. You know, so you have like a couple of things that are different, but like in Grand Turismo 6, like I played Grand Turismo 6 on this channel, y'all can check out those videos. Literally like in that game, they added Vauxhall and Opal in the game and they have the exact same cars just with the different um, name of the brand. It's the same exact car and I'm like, Come on, that's like a little, I mean, I think they did that because they wanted to stop having Vauxhall in some games and Opal in the others, but I'm like, they're literally the exact same cars, like exactly. And so I don't really know if there was a way they could have done that or they could have just not counted that in the number of cars in the game, but they totally don't do that. Now we're on to the Esprit Sport 350, by the way. Um, I'm just kind of narrating this, I'm playing and I'm recording this live while I do it, but I'm just, it's so, it's so mindless that I'm just like, just talking to y'all while I do it. So I hope this is okay. That's, this is kind of a new thing I've been doing just with this series. Usually I don't really talk a lot in my videos. I just kind of give you an intro and tell you to subscribe and stuff like that and tell y'all you're awesome and always thank y'all and all that. And then that's it. I usually just sit there and don't record my voice anymore and that's it. So these are kind of a standout series and I've done this with a few other series in the game where I basically just kind of talk more in certain things, but it just depends on the video, honestly. So, uh, let's see. So now we're onto the Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4 Turbo. This is one of those cars from, I think it's from Grand Turismo 1 and 2. If not, it's there's, there's one, some that are like it. I think the VR4 is actually in every game though, pretty sure. But, um, I also missed the racing modifications from one and two. Those were so freaking good. And then in five, they tried to bring it back, but it just, it just was terrible. I, I mean, I have a lot of beef with Grand Turismo five. I've like, was thinking about this today and I'll eventually organize all my thoughts into like a real video where I talk about this stuff. But I'm like, I think Grand Turismo one was a, an amazing game. Like for the first game, it was freaking awesome. Like. You could racing modify literally every car in a game. There's like a hundred or something. There's a lot of cars. It's so great and fun and replayable. And there's the grind for, you know, testing every car in the Mega Cup Speed Challenge and doing max speed tests and racing modifying every single car in the game just to like look at it and see what it's based on in real life. Like, so one is that. One is a complete game. And it's awesome. Two is a mainly complete game, but it literally improves on Grand Turismo One in every single way. You have like 600 cars. Majority of them are racing modifiable. Some are not, so they can't say every single car is racing modified anymore, which is fine. Um, I knew the Super wasn't going to be good. It's just too powerful off the line. <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to be good, but um, 
Yeah, so like with two, it's literally better in every way from one. You have way more cars, way more racing modified, a lot more Europe. You have European cars. There's like you have British and Aston Martin and TVR and Grand Hill One, but like you really don't have many more options there and there's not even a lot of cars with those and same with american so it's like it's interesting the way that they did that in one they basically it was mainly a japanese game um with some american and uh british cars but then in two they actually added like french bmw german they added uh, Italian. It was awesome. So 2 is basically a better version of 1 in every way. You have more cars. You have more races. You have more replayability. You have a lot of customization in the racing modifications of most cars. Not all of them, but most cars. And Rally is in it. I know that Drag was cut, but like... So that's why I say it's nearly a complete game. There's, there's, there's a rush. You can see the rush. Um... My jo little joystick on this controller is very broken, so I need to straighten it back out. Okay, there we go. But um, then you go to three. and three, they drastically reduced the number of cars, and I totally agree with it. Because the everybody always comments, the jump in graphics from two to three is just shocking. It's shocking how much better three looks to two. Like, three has aged so well. I'm playing this 2020. This is being recorded in 2020, and look at how good this looks. I mean, that is a good-looking skyline right there, and that is, you can you can kind of see some polygon po uh, pixels a little bit, but it's just like a 2001 game. Like, that's crazy how good this looks. And then you go, hey, the skyline just well, this is what you go, but the skyline just freaking beat something. That's the first car to actually change the lineup here. So, um, three is great the the lineup of cars is lower but you get some more rare ones you get tickford you get gillet you get the 787b you get some great cars that they added that are staples to grand Turismo that you get in grand Turismo 3 so i'm not complaining about that um you have a lot more courses so many more courses a couple are removed from two which is a bummer i always miss red rock valley but you have a lot more uh there we go. You have a lot more um, courses in this game. So you, the events are so unique and diverse, which is cool because you kind of have a lot of the same cars. But what's interesting is you have so many of the same cars and you race them in the same races so much, but then the AI are tuned. So you end up getting a lot of races where you actually get... Um, it feels like a totally new race, basically. Like, you get the GT World Cup in Grand Turismo 3, I think in begin all of them. I think it's in beginner, professional, and advanced. And it feels like a completely different race. And you have, I think, almost the same cars, but I think they eventually switch them from rally cars to, like, actual race cars. But same courses, similar courses, similar in all these ways, but it just feels so different. They did a great job of making 3 feel like a complete, and it is a complete game. They made it so good. And there's so few cars and the cars sound great and the a ai are replayable and i mean i've been making a whole channel essentially off of grand Turismo 3 with some other stuff on the side so it's like clearly everyone loves this game and there's a reason why they love it it's because it's well made and it's well done and it's just awesome in every way so then you go okay well what about four how is four better than three well four they basically did to four four is to three what two is to one four is better than three in like pretty much every way because you have um, just so many events just a comedic amount of events and you have a comedically high amount of cars you have so many cars i think you have over a thousand if you if i recall correctly i think gt4 has over a thousand cars and Grand Turismo 3 had like you know what is it like a hundred and like 90 or 200 maybe um that's just nuts and Four has, you know, more rally cars, more events. They have those driving missions. You have the used car lots are back, and you have upgrades. They brought back so many cars from Gran Turismo 2, which that was the thing that, like, was the most difficult for most people about 3 is there's so few cars. They added back a lot of cars. 
Not all of them though, which bothered me. I always miss so many cars from Gran Turismo 2 that are not in any later series, like Colt, the Suzuki Coltist, the, uh, the Gran Turismo 2 version of the Escudo, which was like insane. The, um, they took away the uh, Toyota GT1 road car. Like, I don't know why. I don't know why they put that in two and three and got rid of it in three. I have a train coming by my house, so hold on a second. I'll let it. I'll let it play. I'm a very transparent YouTuber. I leave it all in. So the Aruf RGT actually broke in their time on our thing. So now we have two, two in this video that are on the top. Um, but yeah, like two is to one. What? Um, still kind of there. So the GT1 road car we're coming up now. So that's one of those cars that they just stopped, stopped putting in these games. I don't know why they did that. They totally could have kept the GT1 road car in four i don't really know what happened but yeah four they brought back a lot of cars from two not all of them which is my only gripe with four and but they put so many events and they still added so many newer cars so like cars between 2001 and four they added added a couple of fives that were brand new to come out you know they added the mustang gt the ford gt things that were coming out they had, had the nike 2022 or whatever it is uh, that thing's weird looking and um, just so many events it's just incredible and they added one make races back again and they did the thing like in Gran Turismo 2 where the uh, one make races are at the dealer which I love that because I feel like that's more realistic than having them in a giant menu with all the cars like kind of how GT3 is like as you're scrolling through you'll find like the Lotus Elise race and you're like all right here we go let's use an Elise but in Grand Theft 4, it's back to the 2 idea, which I just love. So I think, like, as I've started to play 4 more again, I'm like, oh yeah, 4's freaking incredible. 4, like, 3 to me is funner because it's more arcadey, but 4, like, 4 literally improves on everything that's in 3. So, like, that's just awesome. And that's the Bugatti Zonda C12S, and it beat a time, so that's good. We're getting some times again. Um, but yeah with five five is like the first game in the series that i feel like just took a step backwards and i don't know why i don't know what happened there but like with five having the ranking system where you can't buy cars unless you're a certain level the b spec mode being more prominent and actually getting cars was a disaster because your driver would get stressed and just crash the car into the side of the road it happened to me a number of times and to do b specs well you have to be in a way faster car but then you're you don't have the money at the beginning of the game so it's like the b-spec mode is completely irrelevant at the beginning of the game but you can't advance it's like they almost went back to gt1 where you have to grind but like there were so many games in between one and five where you didn't grind you could just keep your money win golds and a license and then start the game and then just kind of unlock cars that allow you to do certain things but GT5 was like this weird like take it back to Grand Theft Auto 1 and like don't like you can't you have to be to grind on the same race a million times to get enough money to buy a better car and then use that car in the B spec mode maybe and then use it in the A spec mode and get a different prize car for each which was weird and weird like Jeff Gordon looked terrible in the rally and all that and so like 5 to me is the first blunder that Polyphony did so for you know, how long they've been around that's pretty good that's the only blunder they ever have is just Grand Turismo 5 which is just a disaster and then 6 comes out and 6 is to 5 what 4 is to 3 and what um 2 is to 1 where 6 literally takes everything from 5 that sucks and just gets rid of it they get rid of all of that crappy leveling system they do the stars thing it's better the licenses are in between which is way better like in between 
each of the things. Like you unlock the license like midway through, which is awesome. Uh, you could go on the moon, and there's more cars, and there's interior views, and they they, they don't remove they removed the primary the standard and premium car crap that was in five. They like they fixed five with six, and then sport came out, and sport reminds me of Grand Theft Auto one, three, and five where they have lower number cars, but they look oh my gosh. In Grand Theft Auto Sport, those cars look just breathtaking. Grand Theft Auto Sport is just so pretty. And like, I've seen videos on Seven now and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Because if Seven is to Sport, what, you know, Six is to Five, what, Four is to Three, what, Two is to One, all that, then we're in a good place. And Polyphony's in a really good place. And I'm really excited for Seven. I'm just so excited because if they, they took everything they learned from uh, Sport, and I mean, I think they're gonna have more races in in seven. It's gonna be more of a homage to the older games where you have a lot of AI races to do, and then it's just gonna be it's just gonna be glorious. So I'm really excited. Uh, I love Polyphony. I think they're a great company. They're one of the few that's left that like actually like cares <laughs> about like the the customer, the fans. I think they do a great, 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 great job. So. I always want the best for Polyphony, and I'm just always will support them. I mean, I've been playing Grand Theft Auto 3 for th three years now, so yeah. So now we're done. This is all the cars. So the Formula 1s, of course, dominated everybody in the straight line. We'll see if that changes with the 1,000 meter. Roof, the roofs kick butt, the FTO, the Zonda, the Escudo, and then the R390 at the very bottom there. So we have now officially done every car and this video is only 21 minutes long so that's pretty good um thank you all so much for watching i hope you all enjoy let me know in the comments just your thoughts about things y'all are great and have a great day